how they afforded a place in the suburbs, I couldn't guess. Park Forest was one of Mer America's America's first fully planned communities, a full village with shopping malls, churches, schools, parks, and mass-produced mass houses with cookie-cutter yards. There were there were also limits on limits on how many many black families could live on a given black block. Though by the time the stewards got there, the limits had apparently been abolished. abolished. Not long after they moved, the stewards invited us to come visit them on one of my dad's day off, days off. We were excited for us. It would be a new kind of outing, a chance to glimpse the suburbs. The four of us took the buck south on the expressway, following the road out of Chicago, exciting about 40 minutes later near a drab shopping plaza. We were soon wending through a network of quiet streets with houses that all looked the same. Now, why would anyone want to live all the way out here? My dad asked, staring over the dashboard. I agreed that it made no sense. As far as I could see, there were no big trees like the giant oak that sat outside my bedroom window at home. Everything in Park Forest was new and new and wide and uncrowded. There was no Connor liquor store with ratty, ratty guys hanging out in front of it. There were no cars honking or sirens. There was, there was no music floating from anybody's kitchen. The windows in the houses all looked to be sh shut. Craig would remember our visit there, there as heavenly, namely because he played ball all day long in a wide open lights under a blue sky with Donny Stewart's and his new pot pack of suburban brothers by my parents had a pleasant pleasant enough catch up with Mr and Mrs Stewart and I followed Pamela Pamela around gapping at her hair, her far fair skin and her teenager jewelry. At some point, we all had lunch. It was evening when we finally say goodbye, leaving the stewards. We walked in a dusk to the curb where my dad had parked the car. Craig was sweaty dead on his feet after all the running he, he'd done. I too was Fatigued, fatigued, and are all and ready to go home. Something about the place had put me on edge. I wasn't a fan of the suburbs, though I couldn't explain exactly why. My mom would later make an observation about the sweet stewards and their new com community based on the fact that I lost almost all of their neighbors on the street seemed to be white. I wonder, she said, if nobody knew that they are a black family until we came to visit. She thought that maybe we accidentally outed them arriving from the south side with a housewarming gift or an hour a vicious, a vicious dark skin, even if the stewards were trying to hide their race on purpose, they probably didn't speak on it. 
one way or another with their new, new neighbors, whatever five ex exist existed on their block they hadn't disrupt disrupted at least not until we came to visit was some somebody watching through a window as my dad approached our car that night was there a shadow behind someone curt certain waiting to see how things would go i'll never know I just remember the way my dad's body stiffened slightly when he reached the driver's side door and saw what was there. Someone had scratched a line across the side of his be beloved book, but a thin ugly mark that ran, acro ran across the door and toward the tail of the car. It had been done with a key or a rock and was in no way accidental. I've said before that my dad was a man who never complained about small things or big, who cheerily ate liver when it was served to him who had a doctor give him what amounted to the to a death sentence and then just carried on. The thing with the car was no different if there was some way to fight it, if there was some door to pound in response, my dad wouldn't have done it anyway. Well, it'll be turned. He said before unlocking the car, we rode back to the city that night without much discussion about what had happened. It was too exhausting maybe to even to even think about. In any event, we were done with the suburb, suburbs. My dad must have had to drive the car who to work the next day looking my the way it did and I'm sure that didn't sit well with him but the gash in his crown didn't stay for long as soon as there was time he took the car over to the body shop and and had it erased 